So I'm going to give a short overview of our gene therapy trial for hemophilia that will be presented tomorrow at the plenary session by Dr. Lindsay George. Uh, I'm an employee of Spark Therapeutics and this is my forward-looking statement. Hemophilia is an X-linked bleeding disorder that's caused by mutations in the gene for either factor VIII or factor IX, and right now we manage it by giving recurrent intravenous infusions of clotting factor. This is a medically demanding regimen for patients, and it also results in peaks and troughs of factor level, and people are at risk for breakthrough bleeding when they hit the trough. So the goal of gene therapy is to give a normal copy of a factor VIII or factor IX gene to the individual, put it into the liver cells, and then that directs the expression of adequate levels of clotting factor so that bleeds can be prevented because some continuous level of clotting factor is maintained. So what's the level that we need? We know from studies of the natural history of hemophilia that individuals who are born with severe hemophilia, even on a good medical regimen, can have as many as six bleeds a year. But as the level of clotting factor rises, around individuals who are born with mild hemophilia, around 10 to 12 percent, uh, essentially don't bleed. Uh, so that's our goal, to get long-term expression of levels of at least about 12 percent, to get consistent results across every subject who's enrolled, and to do that at the lowest possible dose, not only because it's always important to use the lowest dose, effective dose of any medication, but also because for these AAV vectors, uh, there is a risk of an immune response directed against the vector that will destroy the efficacy if it's not controlled, and that's a dose-dependent response. So dropping the dose is a good thing. Five years ago at this meeting on the plenary session, Amit Nathwani and his colleagues presented their groundbreaking work showing that an AAV factor IX vector given at this dose, 2 times 10 to the 12th vector genomes per kilogram, could drive long-term expression of levels of clotting factor of around 5 percent. Uh, the results uh, in six patients who got this result um, were, uh, were long-term expression. It's been over six years now, but none of these people achieved expression above 12 percent, and four out of the six needed that course of steroids. So what you're going to hear about tomorrow in the plenary session uh, is the work that we've done to highly optimize an AAV factor IX construct so that now we're able to give it at one-fourth the dose that was given before, and it's driving levels of expression five to six times higher with a mean of 28 to 30 percent, and all of the enrolled subjects achieved plateau levels greater than 12 percent, and only two of the nine needed that short course of steroids to block the immune response. So this is an improvement across a clinically significant range. So this was done by optimizing both the capsid, the outside of the vector. Uh, this is a bioengineered capsid that has a high tropism for the liver, which is our target, and by supplying a very highly active transgene. It's one that occurs in nature. It has one single amino acid difference from wild type factor nine, but four to eight fold higher activity. And that's going to be discussed in a scientific subcommittee on hemostasis later today by Dr. Valder Arruda. I just want to point out that the subjects enrolled in this study are representative of adults with hemophilia in the Western world. Uh, we've enrolled people as young as 18 and as old as 52, people with a history of liver disease and people who never had liver disease, people with excellent joint health because they were always maintained on prophylaxis, and people who have a lot of target joints because when they were younger they were not on prophylaxis. And so it's a range of individuals, and the infusion procedure is pretty simple. People come into uh, a clinical research unit, they get a one-hour intravenous infusion of the vector, and then they come back for periodic laboratory work. These are the data on the first subject in the trial. He was infused about a year ago, and his course is typical. You see a smooth rise in clotting factor level over about 10 weeks up to the plateau, and he uh, had a plateau level of around 30 percent. Uh, he's been followed over the year. He's still at 30 percent. He was checked last week and was 33 percent. And what that's meant for him is that over the course of the year, the year before gene therapy, he had 98 infusions and he still had four breakthrough bleeds. Over the last year, 
no infusions, no bleeding episodes, off prophylaxis, and he didn't need any steroid course to do that. So the power of dropping the dose. We have six more patients who had a course just like his, and Dr. George will tell you about them tomorrow. Two of our patients did have an immune response. The first one, as you see, the level comes up and then it falls. And uh, we recognized that eventually uh, and started the patient on steroids and he stabilized at around 12 to 14 percent. She'll tell you more about that tomorrow. I just want to say that this uh, has been highly effective at reducing the bleeding rate. This is the bleeding rate in the non-participants in the year before vector infusion and in the time since. And you can see there's been a very marked uh, essentially no bleeds. There, there was one individual with bad joint disease who had two bleeds over the uh, time since he was infused, and a very marked reduction, of course, 99% reduction in the use of clotting factor concentrate, and that's really what we're aiming for here. Uh, life free of infusions and free of bleeds, and uh, so that's what you're going to hear about tomorrow.